Hey guys, this week we are working on this monster book of monsters cake from Harry Potter. Firstly, I've got a 15 inch round cake drum and I'm just adding some ganache to stick down my 10 inch square cake that I've trimmed into more of a rectangle shape. You want to stick it a little more towards the back. Then add your filling of choice. This is chocolate buttercream and then place on another layer. Scrape off the buttercream coming from the sides and then coat the whole thing in chocolate ganache. The recipes for my ganache are always in the description box. To make this quicker and easier, I'm using my Pro Froster for a straight side and top all in one go. I've got it on the lowest setting it will go to and it's just skimming above my cake. Add more ganache and start working your way around the sides with the Pro Froster. I have a full tutorial for this tool which is always linked below. Anywhere the blades don't touch, add in more ganache. You'll see it starting to scrape off the top now. Keep filling it and re-smoothing it and eventually you'll get a nice neat rectangle. It doesn't have to be too perfect as it's going to be covered with fur. Once it's set, roll out a long rectangle of white paste, keeping it a little chunky and then roll it around the shorter side, across the front and down the other short side. Using a smoother, just smooth around the sides and trim off any excess paste. Now take your Dresden tool and score in lots of pages all around. They don't have to be perfectly straight. This is a crazy, magical and battered book, so don't worry about it being all ununiformed. The reason for keeping your paste thick is that you can get some good groove lines in it. On the front, quickly mark in the area where the mouth will go so that you can make a little hole just to the left of it for the tongue poking out. Once you're done, trim off the paste from the top by laying your scalpel on the set ganache and let it glide around. I've made a colour wash using a little yellow airbrush colour, brown airbrush colour and water and then applying it to all the pages with a brush to age them. I've rolled out some white paste and cut out the rectangle shape to fit round my book. I'm just pushing the straight edges up against the cake and you'll notice I've cut off just a little too much. But luckily sugar paste is nice and stretchy so I can just pull it and manipulate it to fit. The bottom also doesn't have to be perfect as the cover of the book will be going up against the pages to hide the gap. Just cover what you can and then fill in the back part with a separate piece if needed. Scrunch up some tin foil into a little roll. All these creases make a great effect when rolled across soft sugar paste. Press in all around the base of the book and mark in some rough stone towels with a Dresden tool. Make another wash, this time with black airbrush colour and water to paint on the towels. You'll see them come alive as the colour seeps into the texture lines. Cut a long chunky strip from pale brown for the bottom cover of the book. Lay this up against the pages at the front and cut each end off at a 45 degree angle. Then do the same for the sides, joining the angles up into a point. In the same colour, roll out various sized teardrop shapes and blend these into the book cover. Starting with small ones down the side and working into larger ones at the front. Leave a gap right in the centre for the teeth. Roll small balls of the same colour and press in the centre with a ball tool to make tiny tentacle suckers. The same applies to the top of the book, however we're just blending it into the ganache to flatten it out and secure them. Flatten an oval of pale pink paste and use your Dresden tool to push in a few soft channels.
Blend it into the ganache on the top of the book to hold it in place and squeeze the ends inward slightly. Use the larger end of your tool to mark in holes for the teeth. Same for the bottom but a smaller oval and one large channel in the centre. When making holes for the teeth, make some higher and lower so they're not all uniformed. The teeth are smaller pale yellow teardrops that just need sticking inside the holes with water. Again, make various sizes and shapes. The tongue I've cut from a piece of pink paste so it looks a bit like the end of a ribbon. Just smooth the cut edges to round them out. An optional extra is to texture it with a mat like this one. There's tiny dimples on it and it's always great for tongue texture and dog noses. Gently place this inside the hole we made and add a bit of movement to the end. Now that the mouth is on, we can add the two bigger spikes either side of it. I've traced the name of the book onto some greaseproof paper which I cut to size to make sure it would fit. Just Google to find pictures of the same font or use one that's close to it. Now I'm just cutting around the template into the sugar paste to remove as much as I can so that the paste I stick on will lay flat. I'm using a slightly darker brown and then tracing the letters into the paste with a pencil. Follow those lines with some gold paint using Fay's Regency Gold Dust and Lemon Extract. From this angle the paint doesn't look all that good, but it's just the angle it's being shot at. With the same brown, squash a piece of paste leaving one end chunky and the other end thins out into a point. Place this right in the centre of the book and mark in two large nostrils. Push down behind the nostrils and smooth it out to enhance them. Use a large ball tool to create a hole for an eye, which is just a ball of pale orange paste. Do this three more times. Using a darker orange, I've punched out circles for the iris, and then I'm painting around the very edges with a fine paintbrush and some watered down dark brown gel. Then add in black dots, and finally tiny white ones for catch lights. Using the same dark brown, roll a small sausage with tapered ends and flatten it out. Lay one over each eye and blend them into the base as eyelids. Then add smaller ones to the base of the eye, adding in wrinkles and lines. With the softer end, define in between the eyes and tap in a little bit of texture. Using the same pale brown used as the book cover, we're going to make the spine. Cut it much wider than you did with the bottom piece, so when you join them up at the back, there is enough left over to attach it to the ganache. Just trim it down as it wraps over the top. You need to do the other side too. This is another optional step, but I find painting and shading can really bring a piece to life. I'm using a watered down black and brown airbrush colour mix to mottle on some colour to the top tentacles and the bases of the bottom ones. I'm also using red and pink airbrush colour to colour the gums and tongue before then layering it up with more and more depth of colour using burgundies and purples. Don't worry if you get any on the teeth, you can go over them with a bit of water to clean them off. 
like I said, this whole step is optional, but I do feel it brings it to life. The fur is super easy. Just take some more brown paste with a little bit of orange added to change the shade and start piecing it in around the eyes and the lettering. Just squash pieces in and pull out fur with the Dresden tool. Any pieces you add in to patch the spaces blend nicely just by putting in more fur texture. Just work your way around the centre eyepiece, all the lettering and sides of the book. It can take a little time, but it's worth it. Once you've done all the spaces, add tiny little sausages at the back of the tentacles and a little piece to the front of the mouth. The finishing touch is shading. I started off with some dark brown airbrush colour, which I'm just using on the edges of the fur and inside the book pages, especially near the spine, to make it look old. Just add in extra where there will be dirt or shadows and define areas around the eyes. Then swap it out for black airbrush colour to do the very edges of the board and define the ridges of the stone tiles to dirty them up. And we're done. The perfect cake for any Harry Potter fan. It can certainly look impressive if you do go ahead and add that little bit of painting and shading on the tongue and gums. The actual finished cake also included a little figure of Dobby and a wand, along with the name and the age. As I've done these before, I can just point you to the Hogwarts Castle cake, which will show you how to make Dobby, and this Harry Potter uniform cake, which shows the wand and the lettering. I also have a lot of other Harry Potter tutorials, which you can take pieces from and add to this cake if you wish. Hope you enjoyed it, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you again next week. Bye guys.